Okay, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to be able to use calculated fields within a pivot table. Now, if you just want to do addition and subtraction, the process is very straightforward. But if you want to perform division or multiplication, the process isn't so straightforward. So I'm going to show you the problems you're going to come across and also how to solve them. So we'll start with this data. I'm going to click into it and then insert a pivot table existing worksheet, and I'll place it here in column F. What I want is area and department in rows, and then I want to calculate a variance. So that would be budget minus actual. So this is where I'm going to use a calculated field. Click somewhere in my pivot table, pivot table analyze tab, fields, items, and sets, calculated field. Give the field a name, so I'll call it variance, formula, Delete the zero in that box. So it's going to be budget, double click on budget in the fields list, minus actual. Click on OK, and it calculates that variance for me. If I want to format these values, I right click on one of them, number format, currency, no decimal places, click on OK. As I said, a fairly straightforward process for either addition or subtraction. Let's move on to multiplication. So again, I'll create a pivot table on the same sheet. Now for this one, I want product category and product in rows. And what I want to do is calculate a total, which would be price times quantity. These two fields multiplied by each other. So I'm going to create a calculated field for that calculation. Click somewhere in the pivot table, fields, items, and sets, calculated field, total value. Formula would be quantity multiplied by price. Click on OK. And these totals here are far too large. Now, one way I can show you that they're far too large is by adding a total column within the data. And in fact, this is one of the ways you can get around this problem. So I go to insert a new column, call this total. So it's quantity times price. I'll copy this down. And because this isn't in a table, I'm going to have to manually redefine the data source. So pivot table analyze, change data source, and I'll increase the range to include column H. Click on OK. So I then have the total column here, which I'm going to add to the pivot table. And these are in fact the correct totals. Let me just format them. So why is there a difference between the answers that the calculated field comes up with and the answers that are derived from the data itself? Well, let me just show you what calculation is actually being performed here in this calculated field column. If I double click on this value, it opens up a separate sheet with all the records that we used in that calculation. Now the data is in a table. And one thing I can do in a table is add a total row. And what I'm going to do is sum up these quantities and sum up these prices. And then over here, I'm going to multiply those two totals. You see, I get that same answer as the calculated field gave us. So essentially what the calculated field does is sum up both of the columns and then multiply those two totals. That's not the calculation we wanted to perform. So one way around this problem is to do the calculation within your data. But if you can't do that, or you don't want to do that, there is another solution. Now, before we use this method, I would recommend that you put your data in an Excel table. So what you need to do to do that is to click somewhere in your data and then go to Insert Table, click on OK and then give the table a name. So I'll call this transactions. 
Then I'm going to create a separate pivot table. So insert pivot table. I'll put it on the same sheet. But before I click on OK, I'm going to tick this option, add this data to the data model. Click on OK. Now, then going to add product category and product to my pivot table. Now, if I click into my pivot table and go to field items as sets, you'll see that calculated field is not available to me. And that's because I'm using the data model. Now, instead, we create a calculated field in a different way. What we do is we go to the Power Pivot tab on the ribbon, and we go to an option called Measures. So I'm going to click on the Measures button, and then go to New Measure. Now, it's important that you select the correct table that you want the measure to exist in. So that's Transactions. And you need to give the measure a name. So I call this Variance. And then you need to write a formula for your measure. Now, to get this calculation to be performed at a row level, rather than based on the sum of all the values in each of the columns, I use a function called SUMX. Now, SUMX has two arguments, table and expression. So first of all, you need to say which table you're going to perform the calculation within. So we called that transactions. You can see it appears there in the IntelliSense list comma, and then expression. Now, expression is the calculation you want to perform. So I want to perform a calculation on quantity multiplied by price. And then I'll just close the bracket. I can even choose a format for my new measure. So I'm going to say it's currency, two decimal places, let's say zero, and I'll have pound sterling as my symbol. Click on OK. You can see I get precisely the same answers as I did in this version of the total where I did the calculations within the data itself. So you have two options if you want to do a multiplication calculation within your pivot table. You either need to do some sort of calculation in the data itself or you need to use a measure. And if you want to use a measure, Please remember that when you create a pivot table, you must tick this option here, add this data to the data model. Let's look at a final example, division. Now I'm going to put this data in a table and I'm going to call this table accounts. I'm going to insert a pivot table on this existing sheet. And I'm going to add this data to the data model because I want to do a division calculation. I'm going to add area and department. Now, what I want to do is calculate variance as a percentage of budget. So that'll be variance divided by budget. So because it's division, I've got to use a measure. So to do that, I click in my pivot table. I go to Power Pivot, Measures, New Measure. I have to choose the table that I want to include the measure within. So that's Accounts. So I'll call this percent variance. Now for this calculation, I actually want to return the average of the variance as a percentage of the budget. So instead of sum X, I'm going to use average X. Now this works in a similar way to sum X. The first argument is table. So which table are you performing the calculation in? It's the accounts table, comma. And then the expression is the calculation you want to do on a row level within that table. So that is the accounts table variance column divided by the accounts table budget column. So if I close the bracket and press enter, there I have that average percentage variance. Now I need to perform a little bit of formatting. So I'll right click in one of those values, number format, percentage, two decimal places is fine. Click on OK, and I get those results formatted correctly. So I could check whether these answers are correct by doing a calculation within the data and then adding that new column into the values area of my pivot table. So let's do that. I'll call this 
percentage of variance. So it would be equals the variance divided by the budget. I'll format that as a percentage value and then copy it down. So then what I'm going to do is refresh my pivot table and add percent variance to the values area. And then if I right click on that new column, summarize values by average, you can see that I'm getting the same answers. So this calculation has indeed worked. So these problems with multiplication and division only occur when you're doing a calculation between columns within the data. If you're not, you're not going to come across these problems. So let me give an example of this. Say I wanted to take the VAT off this sum of total value. So I've already got the total within my data. So what I'm gonna do is create a calculated field and I'll call this total excluding VAT. So the calculation would be the total divided by 1.2. So in the UK, we charge VAT at 20%. So I divide by 1.2. Now, if I click on OK, it does perform that calculation for me correctly. So the problem did not occur in that scenario because I'm not doing a calculation between separate columns. I'm only doing a calculation on one of the columns. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you next video.